on our first stop on our journey down the crap lane, we are looking at contrast. But before we do that, I want to introduce you to an incredible animal named Blossom. I'm Patty Hansen, and this is my friend Blossom, and her record is the tallest cow in the world. inspired me the most to get this record. This was actually his cow and he had said many times well, we ought to look into that and I'm finally getting around to doing it. I'm just sorry he's not here to see it. The biggest challenge in measuring Blossom for the Guinness World Record was trying to find a measure stick that was tall enough to fit her. Our veterinarian couldn't reach her so we had to find a step stool or a step ladder for her to stand on. There are dangerous moments when handling Blossom when she has to go to the bathroom. You want to get as far away as possible because she's been known to splatter up to eight feet. She has stopped growing. Actually, she is shrunk in height. Um, when she was about eight years old, she was actually more massive and I think like a person in old age, they shrink. And I know she's, she's shrunk. Blossom having the Guinness World Record is just another little thing she can add to her resume. This is just another feather in her cap. Wow. The reason I point this out is we are accustomed to seeing things that break pattern. We're also accustomed to wanting to seek out things that are different. So the same kind of thing here, looking at these pencils, you see this one, it's red, it's pointing in the opposite direction. It draws people's attention. And as a designer, you're trying to figure out a way to make people look at one thing first. Like here, seven foot one, Shaquille O'Neal standing next to five four Kevin Hart. There is a huge difference there. And that is one of the most powerful tools that we can use in graphic design is using contrast. And there's a ton of different ways to make contrast. So going back to what I mentioned before in the last video, uh, we were talking about just which box is most important. It's very difficult to tell which one people looked at first. But as soon as we added in a little bit of contrast, it created a focal point. It allows us to decide there, that's something different. It screams out in the back of our head, that's important, look at that. You mix in a couple of the other principles of crap, alignment and proximity, and you end up with something that's even stronger. So different ways to create contrast. You can do things by placing really small things on pages with really large things. And when I say pages, I wanna emphasize again, this could be a billboard, this could be signage, this could be on a website, this could be a phone app. Contrast applies everywhere. All of these principles apply in any area that you're going to put this. It could be in video as well. You could use all capital letters next to something that's lowercase. You could use thick type next to thin. You can use really warm colors, ones that are in the red and orange and yellow range versus cool colors like blues and purples and greens. Uh, you can use really dark text next to really light text. Those are all ways to create contrast. Let me show you some examples. Here, a couple different things going on. Size, just dividing the page up where 80% of the page is the top image and the 20% is the uh, black information, the black box with the information at the bottom, that's contrast. The bright, bright, super colorful area compared to the black and white at the bottom, that's contrast. Looking at the size of the text, larger for 38th International Film Festival of India, and then smaller information of when it's happening, that's contrast. Looking at just a photograph, the ball is in focus, all of the rest of those marbles are it's shallow depth of field, so they're blurred out. The bright color versus the dark colors, more contrast. Contrast of color versus just the thin lines. Notice this was used for an ad for Coca-Cola, putting full color up here and having the Coca-Cola bottle in full color was a way to draw attention to the Coke bottle. Then they ended up adding text and more advertisement information in the top corner. Even just straight fonts. 
Here's a book cover for a book that I have. I love this. It's real simple, but just that blue larger compared to the thin light gray, that's contrast. It can be something as simple as a contrast in style on fonts. And we'll get more into this when we deal with topography, but that really nice scripted font for Hooray versus that sans serif simple font for design. The top portion is a larger amount of white kind of paper textured space versus a flat black, smaller percentage of the page. That's also contrast. Here's some ideas with using type contrast. You could do stuff where you have really thick blocky letters versus ones that are more scripted. You could take something where the, the font itself is really thin versus a very thick font. You can even add in little bits of texture. We haven't even gotten into changing the color. You could even push it further by having only one letter larger and, and different style of font versus the other portion. You could do the same thing with size and use just one typeface, but have one version that's bold and one that's plain. Or you could push it even further, having that box around the whole thing, having a completely different font and then going lighter with the gray text and then white text when there's a black background. Here's some before and afters. Looking at this, this is a coffee shop menu. This coffee shop menu is really bland. You know, it doesn't have any photos and the other ones that I'm going to show you do not have photos either. But what this one has is it's not very well organized. To look through this, I like my coffee just plain black for a couple reasons. One, I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't really like milk. Uh, the other thing is I'm cheap. So when I go to a coffee shop, I don't want to spend $7 on a Frappuccino, double mocha, half calf, whatever the heck those things are. I want just plain black coffee. It's going to take me forever to find it on this menu. But if I take that plain information and I push it a little bit more and I organize it, so you set it up to where the prices are all in the same spot. The heading of what the coffee is, is contrasted larger than the description of what that kind of coffee is. That is much stronger. It's also much easier to read. It's not something that's going to blow people away of like, oh my gosh, look how incredible you use the same font over and over again. Hey, you put the price in the same spot, but look how much easier it is to read that and skim down. And then how much easier it is for me to find my cheap cup of coffee down at the bottom. Looking at this business card for this chartered uh, and this air charter service, you think with something like this, this is people who do this super rich. That card looks super cheap. With something like this, you've got the, the text is all over the place. There's no sense of alignment. The color, I'm not sure why that's blue. And the, the font is about the same size for the guy's name and for the service. And there's no sense of organization to this. So taking something like this, we strip the information out and start with the photo and then start building it from that photo, deciding what's the most important thing. Let's go capital air charter. Let's go ahead and make the font for the contact information a little bit smaller and shrink it down a little bit and put it in that gray box. So there's some contrast between the white text and the gray box. Get some other before and afters, a real simple newsletter. The simple page newsletter, there's a lot of things going on in this that I don't really care for, like this empty space that's happening here. You get this big gap that happens with full justification. We'll talk about that when we do our magazines. But the idea is here, that's not really well organized. You can push it in contrast, even without having color, is one of the biggest ways to be able to draw people's attention to one area, and it helps you organize things. Looking at something like this, we've got this indoor outdoor pat patio furniture advertisement for this Pier 7 company. There's a lot of information going on here, and it looks like it's just kind of slapped together. Again, I start with what do I want people to see? The photos are really the most interesting part, in my opinion, but they're not structured well. That black border doesn't really work well. There's inconsistent space between these. This red doesn't make a ton of sense. Let's pull it apart. Let's create one central focal point, that grid of photos, adding some more in, trimming down the border to make it less, uh, less strong. I mean, that, that black border is just so heavy. And then 
grouping things that make logical sense of like, where are you going? Phone number, contact information, little uh, map that's a little bit more functional down here in the corner. That's all done with the idea of contrast and pushing it further. Same kind of thing here for an infographic resume. Which one would you want to spend more time with? All that is, is using contrast, but then also you are still including repetition, same font size. You're using alignment. Things are lined up nice and evenly all the way down. So they're not, this is not created just by using contrast. But contrast is one of the best ways to be able to make some structure and to make people look at one thing before they look at something else. For here, floor, let's just do one. Setting up slides. Slides are so boring to look at when they're just bullets like this. When you know what you want to say, just include an image and then talk about that. Explain what you want to say. You don't, if you have something like this, people are going to read it and they're going to move on. Here, they're stopping like, wait, what, what's going on there? And then you get to talk. Here's a couple contrasts to avoid. I really want you to avoid things like, well, animated GIFs like that. Ugh. But really, it's more about taking the contrast and saying most of my text is straight up and down. So let's go ahead and rotate this. Because what ends up happening is most people end up starting to turn their head this way and you're making somebody have to work. Don't do that. Other one is stacking text on top of each other like this, especially for larger uh, amounts of information, really, really tricky for uh, people to understand. And that is the contrast in crap.